Future Learners. I'm Ankita Vitacharya, Assistant Professor at Center for Open and Distance Learning, Tejpur University. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the, the emergence of environmental sociology. This lecture is primarily prepared for the learners of ME in sociology program and the CODL Tejpur University. However, it will also benefit anyone who is interested in learning the topic. I have kept the content very simple so that it is easily comprehensible to anyone interested in learning the topic. To begin with, we know that environmental problems constitute one of the major concerns in contemporary times, uh, be it climate change, environmental pollution, depletion of natural resources, biodiversity loss. All the environmental changes uh, have emerged as uh, one of the biggest challenges that human beings are confronted with globally. Now, these environmental changes or problems are usually caused by human intervention. So, in other words, uh, we can say that, uh, you know, human induced factors like industrialization, uh, development of modern transport and communication, use of modern appliances, etc. have led to environmental problems. Uh, further, we also know that uh, there is a constant interaction between human beings and the environment. Just like uh, human intervention changes the environment, uh, the environmental factors also play a significant role in shaping social phenomena. Uh, with this, we clearly understand that environment or we can say environmental issues constitute an important area of study within sociology. However, uh, it is interesting to note here that uh, sociology began to take an interest in uh, these environmental problems quite late. Now, we know that one of the uh, social factors that shaped sociological thought was the Industrial Revolution. And this Industrial Revolution uh, was also, uh, like also uh, led to a series of developments okay, uh, responsible for environmental changes or degradation. Now, sociology as a discipline, uh, as we know, emerged in the 19th century as a response to the social changes resulting from uh, the Enlightenment, the French Revolution and the Industrial Revolution. Right. And uh, it emerged more as a response to the negative consequences of this development rather than the positive consequences. Therefore, it is very interesting to note that it did not take into consideration the environmental uh, changes resulting from the Industrial Revolution uh, until very late. So it was not until uh, the 1970s uh, that the link, link between the environment and society was given due emphasis in sociology. Consequently, uh, we saw the emergence of a new discipline within sociology called environmental sociology. Now, uh, the question that arises here is why it took such a long time for sociology or why sociology was late in emphasizing uh, the environmental issues or the link between the environment and the social world. The answer to this question basically lies in the fact that uh, the conventional sociology was preoccupied with social cultural determinism. So, in other words, uh, the emphasis was on the social and cultural aspects. The focus was primarily on uh, the social causes of social phenomena. Uh, so, in order to make you know sociology a discipline uh, distinct from other social sciences or biology, uh, the classical theorists began to sideline uh, the older determinisms, that is, geographical determinism and biological determinism. And um, in the process, what happened? Uh, the biophysical environment that got ignored in sociology. Also here, uh, we need to understand that the term environment uh, had a different meaning uh, in conventional sociology. So it covered only the social and cultural aspects uh, that influence the behavior of an individual as opposed to heredity. So in other words, it was understood only in terms of the concept of heredity and environment. So uh, it, is, um, a, it is a concept where, you know, uh, a human, uh, human behavior is basically shaped by either heredity or environment. So under in the environment, uh, herein comes the social and cultural aspects, okay, factors that has, uh, has an influence on uh, the behavior of an individual. So it covers only the socio-cultural environment. Thus, the environment that is generally understood or we can say the biophysical environment 
or the natural world it did not receive the emphasis it deserved in sociology in this context uh, let us discuss uh, the views of two eminent environmental sociologists um, riley e dunlap and william r catton jr according to them uh, mainstream sociology has been too anthropocentric or human oriented and is based on human exemptionalism paradigm now what is this human exemptionalism paradigm so it is a paradigm uh, that claims that human beings are exceptional species and uh, they are so superior that they are exempted from the environmental forces so with the um, this these paradigm actually became popular after the industrial revolution because after the industrial revolution and you know with the emergence of modern industrial societies um, it was assumed that uh, the most special or unique feature of human beings that is culture uh, was capable of solving all the environmental problems and uh, therefore it could exempt human beings from the constraints of the biophysical environment now dunlop and catton did not deny that human beings are exceptional or unique species but they asserted that uh, human capabilities could not exempt human beings from the constraints of the biophysical environment or nature so they have therefore come up with a new model okay and this model is a uh, new ecological paradigm uh, which is nep in short so uh, which they believe uh, should you know replace the human exemptionalism paradigm so uh, this new ecological paradigm gives full emphasis to the environmental variables and uh, states that do human beings you know have innovative capabilities yet uh, they are dependent on their ecosystem uh, coming to how environmental sociology emerged so in terms of the emergence of environmental sociology the earth day of 1970 is considered a very significant event as it paved the way for modern environmentalism and uh, thereby uh, it led to the emergence of environmental sociology now does this mean that there was a complete absence of environmental dimension in sociology prior to the 1970s uh, well the answer is no so even in the works of you know the classical sociologist uh, be it their kind, be it the works of uh, Durkheim, Weber, or Marx, uh, there were some traces of societal environmental relations, but it was more implied than direct. Also, uh, there were works by you know later sociologists on environment, yet uh, it was only after the inauguration of uh, the Earth Day that environmental sociology emerged as a discipline within sociology. We also need to understand here that uh, rural sociology to some extent provided the background for environmental sociology because from uh, time to time uh, there emerged, uh, there uh, appeared, okay, there appeared works on the environment in the field of rural sociology. Now, coming back to the 1960s, um, it was during that period uh, that environmental movements began to emerge which gained prominence in the 1970s. Also in the 1970s, uh, the U.S. Uh, witnessed an uh, energy crisis. So in the U.S., uh, you know, what happened is that the exploitation of energy sources uh, that greatly contributed to its economic development. And uh, since during that time, the energy supplies were in abundance, uh, they began to, uh, began to extract and use, you know, um, the, the energy resources very unjudiciously. And soon, uh, the U.S. emerged as one of the most wasteful countries. So eventually what happened is that uh, in the 1970s, there was uh, an energy crisis in the U.S. Now, all these developments, that is the environmental movements along with the energy crisis, led to many debates and discussions. Okay. Further, uh, the environmental issues got impetus with the inauguration of the Earth Day 1970. And uh, the debates and discussions around the environmental issues drew the attention of the sociologist. And eventually, uh, the American uh, Sociological Association, uh, you know, it started recognizing uh, environmental sociology and in 1975, a section on environmental uh, sociology uh, was formed within it. And with this, uh, environmental sociology uh, came to be recognized as a sub-discipline within uh, sociology professionally. 
by now uh, we have understood that you know environmental sociology emerged in the 1970s however we also need to understand here that there was a decline in environmental sociology in the 1980s now why did that happen uh, it was uh, in the 1980s you know that neoliberalism reached its peak so there was an emphasis on more industrialization privatization market deregulation and as such there was growing competition among the corporate uh, industries so this lead uh, this uh, led to what this led to uh, limitless exploitation of natural resources uh, and in the process uh, the environmental issues began to take a back seat and uh, there was a decline in the interest of the sociologist in the environmental issues but again uh, in the 1980s uh, there was environmental disasters there were some environmental disasters like uh, the bhopal gas tragedy in india chernobyl disaster in the erstwhile ussr and these had a tremendous impact which revived the interest of the sociologist in environmental issues and, and thereby the importance of environmental sociology was also revived uh, further environmental problems like pollution deforestation acid rain global warming etc were identified as major areas of uh, major areas of global concern um, and then uh, you know there was widespread public support okay for earth day 1990 um, and earth day as we know uh, it, uh, it it is celebrated on 22nd of april and uh, these widespread public support also spoke volumes uh, about the growing prominence of environmental issues in public discourses so it was also uh, during the 90s that it was realized that there has been a shift in terms of the nature and intensity of environmental problems uh, environmental problems have uh, you know begun to emerge as a global problem and they have emerged as all pervasive and uh, that could pose serious threat to life So uh, by now you have understood how environmental sociology emerged and why environmental issues should be given importance in sociology. Now uh, before I wind up the lecture let me just uh, tell you very briefly in simple words what environmental sociology is. So in simple words environmental sociology may be defined as the study of the links between the environment and society or we can say societal environmental interactions. And by now it is clear to you that, uh, you know, there is a constant interaction between human beings and the environment. While human activity influences the environment, the environment uh, influences human life. And this interaction is studied by environmental sociology. Well, that's all I have in this lecture. Thank you.